Bubirwa. One of the most vulnerable areas in Botswana that is often hit hard by heat and droughts mostly caused by climate change has its hopes placed on the research team from ASA to find ways of adaptation to climate change. The adaptation at scale in semi-arid regions ASA project undertook a five-year research project in the Limpopo Basin of Botswana to identify the impact of climate change in the region, as well as ways of adaptation that can help people adapt to climate change. The project was coordinated by the University of Cape Town, with funding from the UK Government's Department for International Development and the International Development Research Centre, Canada, ASA project is uh, maybe three key areas that it wanted to really look at was um, what have been the past trends in terms of the climatic parameters. So it is a climate change project. What have been the past trends? And it is also looking at the impacts of those trends on sectors, on livelihoods. And it is also looking at projections. What will the future be like? So those are the three key parameters that ASA was looking at. The project is part of a, a larger consortium project that was working uh, in India, in uh, West Africa, Ghana and Mali, East Africa, in Ethiopia and uh, Kenya. Southern Africa was working in Namibia and Botswana. And the entire project was looking at adaptations uh, to climate change in semi-arid regions. So it was mainly to really get the research findings and help with these research findings in intervention. For instance, existing policies, planning in the country, we have different plans at district level and also nationally, so that it fits into this, the results. The Bubira research project brought in people from diverse disciplines. I was approached by Professor Masundiri uh, because he was looking for the, the multidisciplinary approach for the project that was being launched as ASA. And ASA happened to be a very big project uh, at a continental level where you have people here in Africa and then people in Asia and some people were coming from Europe but it is mainly focusing on Africa and, and Asia and it is mainly on the semi-arid and arid locations. The focus of the project was really looking at uh, what makes it possible for people to adapt better, which we called enablers of adaptation, and what uh, for people finding as obstacles or hindrances to uh, adaptation, which we called barriers to adaptation. Particularly in Botswana, it was focusing on the Limpopo belt. When the project started, we had to sort of discuss the, the concept so that we appreciate the semi-arid arid zones and also understand the Limpopo basin. We're looking at governance on the one hand, how is uh, governance of climate change adaptation uh, managed you know, at different scales, from local scale to district, um, even national scale, and where possible even at a global scale. So the project was called Adaptation at Scale, which means it can be at an individual household level, or community level, or you know, sub-district level. In Obirwa in particular, our focus was first of all identifying what are the key ecosystem services upon which people's lives are based. Uh, this includes things like water, uh, things like forest products like timber, and t things like non-timber forest products like pane, um, you know, palm leaves for mukolo and which is used for making baskets and for brewing some uh, alcohol. Um, services like land for crop farming, uh, grazing for livestock. Um, so all the natural uh, support system that people live on in the sub-district. In that uh, theme, we're looking to see whether uh, ecosystem services have changed or are changing as a consequence of climate change.
People in Botswana have a wealth of information from their experience with climate change. Therefore, their input was significant in the research project. Rural communities are actually very vulnerable to uh, anything to do with climate shocks. As academics, we can write till Christmas talking about people without involving them. So we, we, we had to actually go out to the rural communities to get their, their voices as part of university community engagement. In most cases, researchers develop theories and then researchers test theories also based on their review of the literature. And in most cases, academics are more concerned about doing their own individual research for their own academic profile. But the difference with the ASA project is that there was so much of community engagement. The ASA team began with community leaders. When we started, we began here at the quarter in, in Babonong by uh, addressing the chiefs of the sub-district. They gave us uh, what they could that with, were the issues and the stakeholders. Then we had a meeting with the court, uh, the court with uh, the community and again through discussions them could identify various uh, potential key stakeholders. Then we had a meeting with uh, government officers working in the sub-district. Out of all those uh, were then able to um, mobilize. Uh, one of our first activities was to try and map who are the key stakeholders in, in the sub-district. And then uh, out of that we drew up a team of a, a group of about 30 or so people, just under 30, um, for a workshop which we called VRA, standing for Vulnerability and Risk Assessment. In that, the participants themselves helped us to identify who are the key stakeholders that are affected by which hazards. Mafoko was one dedicated participant who helped to link the team to the community. workshop transformative scenario planning, experiential learning, house to house surveys, focus group with ASA, I was a research assistant uh, based in one of the districts. I was one of the enumerators collecting data in uh, Bubira district. Before the survey, we had a one-week training, which was out in the field. This training included practicals, but also theory work, where we were introduced to research methodologies, after that, we went through the surveys that we were going to, the household surveys that we were going to collect data on. We would wake up, have a team debrief before going out in the field, uh, pre preparing our, um, our folders for the, the different household surveys. We would um, be distributed in teams, go to a particular village and in that village be distributed among different households. So most of the time people were very open and would um, were friendly towards us. People were very curious to, about what the research was, what it entailed. A lot of people would be out farming or would go to the main village either to uh, for services, to go buy groceries or to go to the post office. There were a lot of youth, uh, a lot of uh, people between the ages of 15 to 40 who were home and unemployed. Uh, I also noticed a lot of children, a lot of young under fives, so I think those are some of the key observations that stuck out. The information gathered from household survey was used to understand barriers of adaptation and also get insight into ecosystem services. My research has been focusing on ecosystem services and adaptations, that is bringing the ecological component and also the human component. I was focusing mainly on provisioning ecosystem services and these are the tangible ecosystem services 
but also cognizant of the fact that there are other supporting ecosystem services which are important. And over the years, especially in the last decade, those ecosystem services have been fluctuating and most of them declining. And for instance, the Mompane caterpillars, in one season, they would appear in one village, the next season they are not there, and some would go even for three seasons without the Mumpani caterpillar. So those are some of the dynamics which uh, have been uh, at play. As the villages are expanding, the population is also increasing. There is also demand for land, especially for agriculture. And despite the droughts, people still need more land to grow their crops. And as they clear the land, they are also reducing the land for pastures. They are also reducing the area where they even harvest their Mopane caterpillars. So those are some of the other dynamics which are even being brought by, by human pressure, not necessarily uh, the climate. We found that it is not only uh, either this or the other, but a combination of, in some cases, climate change will be the main driver, other cases it will be human utilization will be the main driver. Sometimes utilization, sometimes abuse or overuse. So those were some of the findings in regard to uh, ecosystem services. We're also identifying that not all ecosystem services are accessed equally by all people. There are differentials in terms of uh, who accesses this resource or that resource. Uh, sometimes men have an advantage over women in some instances. Other cases, women are more dependent on some ecosystem services than men. So we're finding those differentials that are um, gender specific. Others are age specific. For example, we talk of agriculture. Not many youths you know, want to go into agriculture. And so it's like an activity that is more appealing uh, to the older gen uh, generation. Most people in Bubirwa rely on rain for ploughing. This has become a challenge following the change in rainy season. What they cannot understand is how to move out of the situation. That's, that's where uh, I, I, I really think there is need for, for some assistance because uh, uh, during my, my experience with uh, the local people, they would tell you that uh, uh, our crop yields are declining and they are being caused by lack of, of rainfall. Mopane caterpillars are no longer uh, available they, all, they know what is happening, but how to move out of a situation. They don't have uh, many options to, to, so to speak, to, to, to move out of the situation. Rinsen 
Nernal was at Yawari. Lehatsilo, Lenon, Lenelo, or to Babadi. Rona, Renez, Will Hatsile, Lelesanona. Recite the Murray. Mille Sega Seco, the Lidito Tomis, the Asa, this superior, Lehatsile le Capua, La Ripula Sele le Capua. Kill Hatsile le Mohalim Mateo Mohe. Hella Gore, Baba Capua la Baisi, Trisal has organized the Hatsia. Rona, Harizia, and Hatsi, the Dirisi. The heat is a serious obstacle to drought reduction in Bubira and the rest of Botswana. We are expecting on average about 43 heat waves per year. And this is an increase by at least 20 more heat waves per year. So these are some of the challenges that we are seeing coming up. We are also going to see limited inflows in rivers. And we know these rivers are the ones which fill up our dams. So with this decreased rainfall and more heat and more heat waves, these are the impacts we are seeing. Now our staple foods or cereals or crops, we are going to see an increased decline with maize, decreased decline with sorghum, at least less. Maize is around 23% decline, whereas sorghum is about 11% decrease. This is still under the 1.5, the most moderate climate change you can have for the region. So there are all these impacts, and obviously with heat waves and so forth, it is impacting on health. So the health of the people. So these are some of the impacts that we want people to be aware of and that we should adapt to as a nation. The harsh and extreme heat in Bubira is a hindrance to crop production. Mele bone ba ba reng ba alema ga se gantsi ba tswa ka sepe ka gore phetogalo a PNA ntse le ntjalo e e tabo e dira le gore dipologolo tso the ka gore naga e khwetegile di to di helle di tsene mo ba thong di tsene mo di tshimong tsa bona le ha tse ga le lentse ya no di to ka o itsore ke mo te bulk feed ka sekgoa e ja di jo tse di ntse ya no ga di heta ya na di ta di hula ya di roba ka ka di di tha ya no bo ithala le gore conflict but we need to reduce it. The region itself is rich in tourism facilities, including game reserves. The game reserves help locals with employment and also provide a platform for locals to appreciate the beauty of their natural resources which also contribute to driving the tourism sector of the region and the nation as a whole. The wildlife, especially elephants in the game reserves, bring a serious human-wildlife conflict in the region. <laughs> from those areas this is general Balemela dito. Romente no rutu etsa gore re ithute gore re tshelele tsone. A gona ya ka o ka tsela le phiri ena a jale go. A jale ru. O bo go tu ithute gore o tshelelene. Oka. Ya. Ke ra gore le tsela dito maeso gore mente a re re ithute gore re tshelele dito. Me kana to hela e go bona tsa malatsi ya e go bona hela ya go bona. Next, 
ka July hele tse ye nwe e ta motshimo ka bo 5 maitse bo be tsena motshimo e bona batho ba ba masake ba thatara diplodi ba bona to yeta e thameletse tsa gore re ne tshore ke lenyora ka di tile motse ga re e le gone re le tsa monne mongwa e bona le thobolo ha ba ata ka kwano le gone a ta re thusa o ta e hulela le motshimo ba to ba ja khetse ka di khantsa wa life ba tene re tse tota se mo sa te a se ba tse sentaka gore ba dumela gore le yone thuso ya gore mente la ha o yo le ne o ka re ga ba a ba re tse itsie la e ko bona ga mpe no example le na ke le maha ene re tso re ne a te mo anu se tso ke ne go teng e compensate a botoka a mpe ne ke a senya di wa di senya di pipe ba na two months ba sa ntusi a ba ta moro ga two months ba ntse ka di pipe di jalo di suile ba rena re jwe le di jalo ya no ba to tota se mo se mo le mo mo go bjang wa sa mo e ma sent special ka re le mo tsidi a ralala le ma tselo a ba tho a mo di phatse a o kwatsa mo re ke ba ta go ka re gona o re ha o re wa tswa bo kopana le ditu in terms of livestock considering that livestock is important but yet at the same time it is being affected also by the foot and mouth disease it's difficult for the local communities to 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 get fair income from their livestock because they can't sell outside their sub district di go mo ma eso di di la 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 go na specialist ja mo kgaolo yone ya bobirwa ha re rua ha re a le ba le helo le rua la mo go lona gore le kana ka re rua le re rua ha ela ha re le be le gore re rua re rua la mo le helo le kana ka ha ke sala ke tsena di di tshuza asat di ntshubetsa gore le rua mo bobirwa mo le hitile mahuriso ngwaga le ngwaga la ha pula e kana mo bobirwa ngwaga le ngwaga nthenye ngwa bobirwa o tshwanela gore go nne lu me pula e nne tsene e sa bose se sa bose super gore se kiri ha re huri santeng go pitagane le ruo le ntse le heta e mahuriso Local participants benefited in many ways from the Asa research project. More conversation with the group as varied as here. One thing that I think we have left the community with is the having some of the officers trained to carry out consultations that uh, are participatory. So we did this through the VRA process, the VRA workshops. We also did uh, this through Uh, our TSP or transformative scenario planning, where by engaging with communities, they were able to uh, see that there's value in themselves, that what they know can actually make a difference to their own lives, and and that realization uh, boosted their morale and their confidence that they can publicly state that you know I think of this because they believe we can be carried through. So when they see. the ideas now in in print uh, and we're saying this are going to your local council a local government and rural development uh, water energy and minerals uh, some of the names might have changed since we started uh, environment and tourism uh, environment wildlife and tourism uh, office of the president uh, agriculture so uh, mining industry and technology all these ministries give us permission to carry out the project and likewise we also promise to feed back to them we are going to have that feedback as we have here so that means we are elevating our recommendations from the local level to central government and hopefully um, somewhere along the line these will be picked up for implementation in due course e ba to ba sa ba kile ba retsa ba risa workshop go zanziba nna ba ba ta go thalaganya gore side ha le nante go ira ga line re ba tharosa ka tsone di to ka re o ile ga helana go tsile le ma ma ba wet life ba hela tsa ba ruta le ka gore dito re ka di tila jang e re ka re ka di tudi ko ba jang ha re sana metaka se motshimo ka ba ke hela ke jala ba re ruta ka chilisi ke jang le chilisi ke yone ke teke ke di re ka ba re laetse some of the community members were even saying the project has given them an opportunity to have a direct dialogue with government because the government representatives were brought to the lodge and then engaging one another as equals so these 
The VRA was one key activity that brought direct dialogue between locals and other stakeholders to unearth challenges faced by locals and coming up with solutions. During the vulnerability and risk assessment, transformative scenario plan, all the engagement processes we did, what was coming out was that uh, we saw that people are vulnerable in the district and they need to, there has to be agency in terms of adapting to climate change because temperatures are going to increase so it's not going to get any better, it's going to get worse and so they have to be, like in the VRA, what came out was that we need other sources of livelihoods apart from agriculture and yeah, having cattle and things like that so we need to find alternative livelihoods. The way we used to do things now um, is changing and uh, being dictated by the, by, by the change in the, in the, in the climate and which means uh, then we also have to adapt to new ways. As I am very good to learn that it is a bottom-up approach. You know, what are two set hatter because people would, would own those decisions. Or given Kirunar Terry Switzoy and a Kirunara can say in Jan, Merbata or Dirahal. Merontal or Namuto. Modi activity in Totesa, Kidi attendance as a key to Tilegore, Hokopana, later from different uh, background, diverse group like uh, Bofama, the VDC, government employees. The, the, the private companies who are in the government, 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 who are in the First and foremost, the stakeholders, the, the participants in the area, well, they have been having the challenges and they were not really aware or fully uh, alert to the reality that the nation is interested in that plea or that situation. So with this research, they feel involved in its participation. This is what we mean by active uh, participation of the citizens. Once you involve, you make sure that the communities are in, uh, active participants. They own the products and they can take them forward because they were part of every stage of that product. As climate shocks continue to affect the region, there are visible signs of new adaptations that are naturally formed within locals as responsive measures. In my case, we're looking at how adaptation practices uh, to climate change has improved uh, livelihoods and increased resilience and uh, reduced vulnerabilities. But I had a specific lens looking at drought. So we picked drought because we know that with uh, climate change we are going to have more frequent and severe droughts. Uh, science tells us that, the recent IPCC report tells us that, particularly in Botswana, because um, Botswana is very prone to uh, climate change. So specific to my objectives is that, one, I wanted to understand how the multi-levels of governance, so looking at national level, uh, district level, and local communities, how those different levels of governance inform or influence uh, drought management in Botswana. And then secondly, I wanted to understand how the drought relief program in Botswana, does it contribute to long-term resilience or does it uh, respond to drought in, a, in an emergency uh, type of uh, approach? There is a commitment to climate change. In climate change, we really want resilience, climate resilience. And this project on adaptation is working on that, climate resilience. The second thing is disaster reduction more droughts, more heat waves and so forth, those are disasters. So our country is looking at climate change resilience and risks that are reduced that relate to disasters. So we are looking at our settlements being much more secure against the climate change because climate change has got lots of extremes. You have your floods, you have then your heat waves and so forth. So the current nature of climate change is really on that risk element. So our project is really trying to generate data and engage stakeholders in terms of really understanding what the future looks like. Bubiro is rich in underground water, 
As a result, some locals are shifting from subsistence farming that relies on rain into irrigation farming. Over the years, uh, realizing the failures they've been experiencing uh, in terms of crop production or livestock production generally or agriculture in general, uh, as well as uh, the adverse they've been getting and sometimes ignoring, now they're beginning to see that actually there is more value in listening to the advice and following it through. Uh, the seasons have shifted drastically. Right now we are in the last week of November and they're saying there's been no drop of rain ever since, uh, you know, the last rainy season. And so the shift in the rainy season can't be ignored anymore. So they, they are finding that they are almost like being forced to, you know, adapt to the new situation much more now than, than before. Mwak is one of the young enthusiastic vegetable producers in Gobojango. Naki Rixes Abato, Ba one one, honorable Mavarixamo, Mome Wulum Barixamero, Caba supply, I vegetable like a supply, shop or some of Wunu, let's go pick a supply. You know, Taki Huena Little Queto. I give him a cabbage, Nakon Gona Hell like a Palago harvest. The GDD are taking the hot like a NT Palace to go with you as a Despite the challenges of extreme weather, many farmers produce quality vegetables and vendors benefit from that. Climate shocks have affected many livelihoods in Bubira. Opportunities for making a living are depreciating. In spite of this situation, people are finding new ways of making a living. Some women ventured into basket weaving for income generation. In Linzueli Muriti, there's a group of adult women that ventured into basket weaving. Even though basket weaving is popular in Lenzueli Mirit, the youth seem to have no interest in it. Usually elders in rural areas survive on Ipelekheng, a government short-term employment and relief program. In Motlabaneng, a group of women also have a similar basket weaving group created to service the tourism need. Overnight, Rita Maisa Leva Jana Layano Aoi Ita 
Unse ana lo bona abate. Arna transport. Ya ora hari le ditso re ba tau e re kisa re tshonne ya no ja ka go mpieno fisa re ka pala makoloi ra yo isa ho nyana mo ra utlela ba ina ra ipapa tsa rna le re kgetho tsa kwa re kisa ntene mokolwane ha o hele mathata o ne ya no ha o tsena luba yana o jiwa ke di khomo mara ha di khone o tsenelela ha ga re ha mokolwane ka re wa thaba Just like in Lenzweli Murid, women in Motlabaleng have the challenge of making good sales out of their basket weaving venture, leading them to join Ibelegeng. Rona bo phelo ba lena kone mohana yana re bona o ka re tsa tsile ya fisa. Ka re ipeleni a re hiro there ba bantsi mo motseng. Go di o thewela ba bana. Ore ha ba bangwe ba thewetse. Ha o le tsa o re keta. Ke be ke tshwara yo mongwe re ya lubula ko kona le ba yena re na re a tshentsha na re tsetsa while we know that uh, climate change will increase the severity and the impact and the frequency of drought, the way Botswana manages uh, drought is institutionally uh, devolved from the way uh, we, we do adaptation. Uh, so institutionally, these are two parallel processes. For drought management, for example, institution-wise, we have the Ministry um, of Local Government, uh, Rural Development, that manages drought management. But for climate change adaptation, this is managed by meteorological services. And institutionally, these are two separate uh, processes. And I found that out that while we have a very extensive program that deals with drought, these two processes need to be closer together. There has to be more coordination between these two so that we have more proactive measures um, that build long-term resilience such that we don't have to react once the damage has been done. We plan for it, we do preparedness plans, we do contingency plans, we do long-term building resilience. It also means uh, gaps have been identified in terms of our planning. Even though we've been having drought for so long in our country, we are not mainstreaming it in terms of our economic planning, the district development plans, and even the national uh, planning. So as a result, there were awareness efforts by the team to talk to different stakeholders to close those gaps. Already in the area and even district council meetings, the team has gone there to talk to the various stakeholders about those. We also are looking at it at the regional level, Botswana and Southern Africa. How do uh, these impacts compare from country to country? For Botswana, maybe some of the key impacts that have come up is the temperature, it will increase is going to get hotter. You also look at the rainfall, you are looking at under 1.5 degree, at least 5% reduction in temperature, if our temperature warms by more than 1.5 degrees. If it is two degrees, then we're going to have 9% decrease in rainfall. Meteorology plays a crucial role assisting locals to reduce barriers of adaptation the information from the meteorology services is required in making key decisions, especially in farming. The main aim of my research was uh, to investigate climate information, how the communities of Ubira district did, uh, did interact with climate information. You know, there's quite a number of information that we give to communities as a whole, and Bubura also received that information. The information includes short-term forecasts, seasonal forecasts, and long-term climate information. So I wanted to find out if they use the information. If not, what are the barriers? We have the Department of Meteorological Services that are based good Pique. So what they do, they always send us the, the forecast through the GovMail. In advance. Kana information ya boyo tu sa ro plane, o plane ahead. We saw that the pulley tata di lebu kete, the pulley tata di lebu zana. If so, ke kadi raing and there are so many methodologies sa sa temo sa lo kadi kadi risiwa. Le di peo ya lo ka ba 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 limi especially ba ka hola kana lebo ne ba le patala crop production. Or ba bono or ba kadi risa 
metali he ya gore ba te ba ba itepate panyele semse and also kana khaolo ya gape is another area ile gore sabelwa ke dibetsa tsa tholego out say e e re thusa le rona gore re le office ga pere ipaka nya gore shoot those things happen re be really well prepared bo bone ba metrology ba ba re nela pego ye ye ta ba isupa gore pula ya gona na komang e le sele ka ntse ska ya ne mo thata jo bone ko gore ga ba khone go khaoganya sente gore ba supe gore ko bo biru kana ko sibe phikwe kana ko france town pula ya gona e le sele ka ntse ska na ka dika ba to ba re khaolo ya ya le gare bo kone bo thaba ha ba re bo kone bo thaba pula eta boina na ke le mo limo wa bonong ke thaba ke ipakanya tsa gore pula kana yeta wa france town le na ba ipakanya tsa re ga te pula ka 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 manta ka kana ka la boka yona ya bo e sane kwa ya bo ena france town kana ya bo e sane kwa ya bo ena hongwe ne ke re hongwe bona ba ka toka ha tsa bona ba tipola ya gore hongwe pula ba khone go e bega ka di khao ba se ke bana ba re le gare bo kone bo thaba based on my findings to policy makers of course there is need for capacity building for the climate information producers particularly uh, in terms of long term information and uh, seasonal forecast to improve it such that it's more relevant to the people out there and reduce the special skills that the people uh, found it a barrier to use and even the distribution in time so those were the limitations that needed to health capacity so that the gaps are filled the other one is to climate proof uh, government programs such that those who do not trust the forecast and are, are not using it and by the way there are only a handful so that they are they don't become vulnerable to impacts of climate change because they did not incorporate climate information into them after completing research work the ASA team went back to Bubira to give feedback to community leaders and share findings and recommendations of the project. We know as a country we are driving a knowledge-based economy. So our research is the anchor or at uh, really the foundation of making sure there's knowledge. Now that we have done uh, the research, the knowledge is available. It is being shared in different ways, different platforms. It is being shared in the local languages. It is being packaged in a simple way so that the findings are translated and easily understood. It is being shared with those who are doing planning in terms of economic planning and physical planning. One of our undertakings, once we were given permission to do the project, was that at the end we were to come back and feedback the community about the, out the uh, outcomes from, from the project. And so it was to fulfill that uh, objective to report back to the community. But more than that, uh, it was also to uh, bring the research findings to the end users who may use this you know, as they decide. So you'll find that our research uh, output is fr framed in the form of recommendations. So we have data or evidence of our observations and analysis and then uh, recommendations about what could be done uh, in that particular area. So the idea today was to present those findings and recommendations to the chiefs in the area. Uh, it was mostly the senior chiefs for the Wabirwa and uh, several other fish, uh, chiefs you know, from uh, Babonong. Um, because it's already beginning of the, what's supposed to be the plowing season, uh, other chiefs from other villages could not make it. But the idea is that the senior chiefs who are here would then share the information you know, with them on behalf of the communities. So we are aiming and hoping that um, by this feedback, our research findings can be put into use immediately and directly by the end users. So it's not just research that is published somewhere uh, that's obscure. So it is a way of publishing our information, ensuring that it is likely to be used. A component that was very highlighted in our project of ASA, which we called research into use, that our research must be relevant, must be usable, and must be accessible to the end users. I wouldn't say we were the first people to preach the message. People already had heard the concept climate change. But the local communities wanted it to be packaged in such a way that they appreciate it. What's of paramount importance is that what we've researched here in Bumira has to come back to the people and it has to be shared with them, especially on how it's going to impact their lives positively. You know, what we can do and have done as researchers is to unearth information 
uh, to process it, to package it in ways that we think uh, it can be uh, you know, taken up by the end users by way of recommendations. Even as we were discussing this morning with the chiefs, we were saying well, it is ultimately up to them uh, to identify with the recommendations, uh, relate with the recommendations that they can do something about immediately by themselves. Of course, there are others where they need input from outside. So it means they, they need to lobby, uh, say, central government to make available resources for them to implement some of the recommendations. And some, even central government might need resources from beyond. Um, we are part of a global agreement on the climate change, the UNFCCC. So it may be that some of the recommendations from here may need to be elevated through the process. That's why it's adaptation at scale. Uh, it can be a local scale, it can be a global scale. So the recommendations lend themselves to that kind of uh, implementation pattern from local level uh, to global level. Even though the ASA research project in Bubira was a massive project, it shed light to new aspects of research that requires looking into in Bubira and the nation at large. We need to be able to adjust, we need to be able to change, we need to be able to grow that, and appreciate that we can do things the way that we've always done. We have to change, so because of that, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. Aba yego leka ho ho solicita mo mo funds. Kape, iska na kwa le abu biro hela. Funds ogona li de kwa le zilu chana mo kweni. So they they need to solicit more funds and extend their services to the kwa le zilu chana mo kweni zilu. So that go be hello. Ebe le hore le hatsi lo teka kaka rezu. Reba sensitize teka issues that climate change. We usually talk of upscaling, and that is really part and parcel of this, and why we had it as a global project. For instance, when you look at Namibia, you can already have uh, comparisons between Botswana and Namibia, where the impacts be the same and so forth. So upscaling can come in two ways, whereby the results from Bubonung are upscaled to other regions. Uh, secondly, the upscaling can come in terms of reproducing the same kind of method in other parts of the country. ASA research in Bubirwa brings about many benefits to the region and to individuals through acquiring of new knowledge and skills. The research information that we came up with, the findings, the recommendations, doesn't just end here because the project has ended, but it, be, it continues to be used for planning purposes, um, to inform the way that uh, Bubirwa sub-district is able to uh, plan and is able to act and, and, and so on. Bane Baritisa wrote from different sectors. It has taught us for a half thing, the indigenous um, or the grassroots information is also important. We were collaborating with other uh, researchers in East Africa, West Africa, and in India. And that has helped me a lot in, in, in learning new skills and even learning or having different uh, perspective to, to, to local challenges. This research has pushed others into new heights and new fields of understanding. Ecology can be uh, without a human face. You know, go and look at organisms, go and look at things, go and look at soils, go and look at water. But in this project, I had in, you know, opportunity to interface my ecology with people in terms of making sure that our research is relevant uh, and our research can be used and in fact is targeted directly to the end user at different scales. And something that I found that even my colleagues in ecology were asking me, what, are you now a social scientist? Um, and I think one thing I learned is that you know we don't need to do research in silos. In that we had uh, natural scientists such as myself, uh, social scientists, economics uh, working together. Um, so we, I want to believe that we are all being enriched mutually. I can now run workshops, facilitate workshops, which is not common for. A biophysical scientist. It's one of the projects that really we are very proud of as the University of Botswana. So in the Faculty of Science here at the University of Botswana, climate change and water resources are the top two 
areas of research in my faculty. So we are humbled by this contribution of ASA. Mitigation is necessarily talking about reducing emissions. These emissions are the ones that lead to uh, global warming or increased temperatures. So ASA, in terms of its scope, focus more on the adaptation side. That is because uh, mitigation, we don't really have much in terms of control. The kind of climate change that we are experiencing here in Botswana is not because of the emissions that Botswana is giving out. It is because of the emissions that the whole world is giving out. So if we are to make any meaningful or strong impact, it is in adaptation, whereby we secure livelihood, we build safety nets and so on. The ASA research project in Bubira was one of its kind in Botswana. It has brought together communities, government and the private sector to work towards a common goal of resolving issues of climate change.